Warren Buffett has many lessons for life, but one of my favorite one is this. Be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful. An old school saying that two primary emotions drive the market, fear and greed. You have to admit, the stock market in 2022 has been rocky. There's been ups and there's been downs, constantly toying with our emotions. As of October 2022, the total stock market is down 18% and the S&P 500 is down 20% from the same time last year. These rough waters test the resolve of even the most hardened investors. None of us have a magic ball, and we don't know what the future holds for the rest of this year and 2023. However, if Warren Buffett is correct in his statement, it is during these fearful times that we must stay the course and continue to invest. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. The first reason to be greedy when others are fearful is because we shouldn't be surprised by a down market. We should actually expect them as a normal part of the economic cycle. Morgan Housel, the author of Psychology of Money, says in his book, the correct lesson to learn from surprises is that the world is surprising. There is no way anyone could have guessed that COVID-19 would have hit us like it did, that Russia was going to invade Ukraine in 2022, or inflation was going to hit double-digit numbers. However, just like surprises aren't new, down markets aren't new and should actually be expected. When we just keep winding the clock back, we're hit with so-called surprises after surprises that in essence, crash the market. The global financial crisis of 2008, the 9-11 terrorist attack in 2001, the tech crash of the 1990s, the Black Monday of 1987, the massive inflation of the late 1970s and early 1980s. We think 6% mortgage rate is high, try 20%. We could keep going, but you see the trend here. The specific trigger is impossible to predict, but what is consistent throughout history is that dips and crashes in the market are to be expected. The news makes it sound like the Federal Reserve increasing its rate is shocking news, but it's not. They've done it many times in the past and they'll continue to do it in the future as a tool to manage the economy. The war in Ukraine is tragic, but the conflicts are not new. Supply chain problems have always existed, it's just more exasperated due to certain specific triggers. For some reason, we're all surprised when these type of events happen, but for students of history, it really shouldn't be. The mass media has conditioned us to make us think that these are significant events that we should be surprised by. But they're incentivized to sell news, so who can blame them? The main idea beyond be greedy when others are fearful is that we should invest consistently no matter what the market or the news is doing. That is how we win in the long run. So know that rocky markets are normal. And know that market fears are normal. If you're greedy like me, stay the course and stay invested. The second reason to be greedy when others are fearful is because market volatility is how money is made in the stock market. Volatility is a double-edged sword. People fear it because it can lead to losses in the short term. However, it is how the stock market produces high expected returns that it does because it also presents opportunities for gains. Let's say that you fear volatility, so you pull your money out whenever the stock bottoms out. In those cases, you're actually missing out on the rebound when the stocks have their best performance. According to JP Morgan, in the past 20 years, if you stayed fully invested riding out all the ups and downs of the market, your annualized return would be around 9.4%. However, if you were to have missed just 10 best days in the last 20 years, your annualized return drops to 5.21%, more than 4% in returns. Now, how about if you missed the 20 best days? Your return drops to 2.51%. And 30 days? Effectively no returns at 0.32%. Like life, good days happen because there are contrasting bad days. These days with the best returns happen because we have contrasting bear markets. And you can only take advantage of these best trading days if you're doing these two things. One, buying consistently, and two, staying invested. If the stock market did not have bear markets, it would have bond-like returns, flat with minimal ups and downs. If you want no risk in your portfolio, you essentially invest all your money in treasury bonds, which are assumed to never default and you will get the interest rate you were promised at maturity. But long-term treasury bonds only offer 3-4% to return, while the stock market has at long-term returns much higher than that. Of course, no one wants to see their investments go down in value. But we must remember that short-term stock prices are not a reflection of the value of the underlying company, but rather a reflection of the investor sentiment at any given moment. If you take no risk, the financial market will not reward you with high expected returns. If you want to make money in the market in the long run, embrace volatility. They are your friends, not the enemy. The third reason you want to be greedy when others are fearful is because at the end of the day, there is no perfect time to enter the market. When it comes to winning with investments, the key is not to focus on timing the market, rather it's the time in the market. In an annual letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders, Buffett once said that the only value of stock forecasters is to make the fortune tellers look good. Smart investors like yourself know that it's impossible to predict a stock's future outcomes. However, this doesn't stop millions from trying. 
Like Las Vegas, the hope of hitting big attracts millions and even tens of millions to the market to try their luck with the stock market. But the trouble with trying to time the market is that getting it right once is enough to win in the market. You have to actually win twice. Once you sell, you also have to decide when to get back in. Let's say that after you sell at this rough market and the stock market rises. In this case, you're losing money or more precisely, missing out on the stock market gains. You can choose to give up and cut your losses or buy back into the market at a higher level than you sold it. Or you can let it ride hoping that the market will eventually reverse itself and you're assured of your decision to sell. This could happen or it could not. But let's say that your prediction was correct and the stock market fell more after you sold. But now what? Now you have to decide when to take your money and buy back in. When you do, how do you know if you're buying back at low or just buying back in the middle instead of the end of the bear market? The bottom line is that in order to succeed at market timing, it's not good enough to be right just once. You have to be right twice, when you sell and also when you buy. I know many people who try to call the end of the bull market. Unfortunately, these people almost all certainly left stock market gains on the table by trying to time the market. Instead of trying to time the market, we should focus on time in the market through regular consistent investments. The fourth reason to be greedy when others are fearful is because to be honest, our long-term memory sucks. 30 years from now, when we're all rich, retired, and relaxing in our private Italian villas, we won't remember when we invested our money. Because frankly, it won't matter. If you're investing for the long run, you'll forget whether you invested now, three months from now, or even a year from now. Just take a look at the chart of S&P 500 in the last 100 years. I can almost guarantee that most investors who invested 30 years ago don't really care in retrospect whether they invested at this specific point or this specific point. With time, it all washes out when the market trend is up. If the total market is trading at $10,000 per share in 2050, would you care if you invested with the market at $118 per share or $120 per share? Your investment grew and that made you financially independent regardless. When we're investing for the long run, the specific timing of when we invest our money becomes less and less important. Continually buy when people are fearful and also buy when people are greedy. 30 years from now, when we're all sipping our vintage wine in our Italian lakeside cottage, we can all have a good laugh about this little blip in history. Until then, stay in the market and keep buying. The number five reason to be greedy when others are fearful is my favorite and one that is most applicable whether the market is choppy, calm, or somewhere in between. And that is investing consistently keep things simple. We can literally spend an entire day analyzing the market and individual funds. There are millions of people who actually do this. And you don't have to look far to see them. Just jump on any Reddit threads related to day trading and you'd be surprised how many people love talking about this stuff. Trying to interpret the stock charts, predict direction of future changes, creating complicated valuation spreadsheets. It may sound appealing to some, but for me, despite how much I love learning about personal finance, the economy and investing, I have absolutely no desire to do this. And this is because I know that all this extra analysis will lead to no better and often worse returns than if I did nothing. Sure, are there people who can consistently beat the index? I'm sure there are. But in the history of investing, only a handful of people have been able to do this consistently. But that is exactly why Warren Buffett, John Templeton, and Peter Lynch are household names. Our names aren't. So my strategy is to have a simple investing plan where I tune out the financial news, invest my money at regular intervals independent of recent stock market moves. It's not like I don't read financial news. Because I admit the Wall Street Journal is one of my favorite newspapers and I find the articles fascinating. However, it's primarily for education and entertainment purposes. The beauty of just investing consistently is that this enables me to spend less time worrying about the stock market and more time with my family, leisure activities, and other cool activities like creating YouTube videos like this. Warren Buffett famously encouraged investors to buy during the depths of 2008 financial crisis with the following quote. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. While this quote can encourage some to time the market, for smart investors like you and I, it should help us get over the fear of investing consistently in a bear market. Market is choppy right now, but that is a good thing because rough waters means many are fearful. Be greedy and invest. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to learn more about what specific funds to buy during good and bad times, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.